n to the power of n equals n. Solve for n. For dealing with this kind of questions, firstly, we claim that n cannot be 0. Why? If n equals 0, we have 0 to the power of 0, which doesn't make any sense. So, it is undefined, which means n cannot be 0. So if n cannot be 0, we're very happy, very glad that what we can do is to divide both sides by n. So now we have n to the power of n equals n, and after dividing the both sides by n, n to the power of n over n equals n over n is just 1. Very happy. This is just n to the power of what? Now, by using the formula, a to the power of x over a to the power of y equals a to the power of x minus y. So the new exponent is just the subtraction of the exponent from the numerator and the denominator. Since the denominator is n, which is equal to n to the power of 1. So by using the formula, we have the left-hand side is just equal to n to the power of n minus 1. The right-hand side is 1. It's not easy. We've successfully reformed the equation because this equation has the form x to the power of t equals 1. So our main job is actually dealing with this kind of equations. Now we have three cases. In general, these three cases have to be discussed one by one. Firstly, if x equals 1, t can be any real number. Secondly, if t equals 0, then if x is not, sorry, 0, if x is not 0, then this equation also holds. So in these two cases, the equation successfully holds, and there are not so many conditions. If x is negative 1, then also if t equals 2 times k, that means it is an even number k is integer. So for the equations in this form, x to the power of t equals 1, there are three cases. So for our this question, we also have to consider all these three cases. One by one, if x equals 1, because it's n to the power of n minus 1 equals 1. So n is x, t is n minus 1. So here, if the base equals 1, that means n is 1. Of course, n minus 1 is a real number, so it holds. t equals 0, that means the exponent equals 0. n minus 1 equals 0. So n equals 1. So it'll be 1 to the power of 0 equals 1, which also holds. However, you can find out that the first two cases provide us with the same solution, n equals 1. So we just write once, n equals 1. For a third case, a little bit complicated, x equals negative 1. So here we have n equals negative 1. And of course, n minus 1 should be negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And negative 2 is what? It's 2 times negative 1. And here we have our k. Our k is negative 1, which is an integer.
So that means when n equals negative 1, the equation also holds. n is 1 or n is negative 1. So we can conclude that the solution is n is 1 or n is negative 1. Did you get it? Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to me for more wonderful questions, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!